Welcome back. The questions are still coming in about COVID-19 and the state's response. We are continuing our live Skype conversation with New Hampshire State Epidemiologist Dr. Benjamin Chan. Thank you so much for being with us and answering our viewer questions. And we'll get right to them. Evie McSweeney asks, how did COVID-19 get that name? Uh, good, good question. So COVID-19 stands for Coronavirus Disease 2019. And it's the disease that is caused by the novel coronavirus that first emerged in China in 2019, hence the name. All right, and Marie asks, if someone suspects that they had mild symptoms in the past, how would they know if indeed it was the virus and would they be immune? Um, because the symptoms of COVID-19 can mimic many common um, respiratory virus symptoms, it's very difficult to know from symptoms alone whether someone had COVID-19. It, it's certainly possible, partly depends on when someone develops symptoms. For, so for example, if someone had symptoms last year, it's, you know, and have been in New Hampshire the entire time, very unlikely those symptoms, um, you know, were due to COVID-19. But now that it's widespread in our communities, even common cold symptoms could be due to COVID-19. Um, the only way you would know um, in hindsight, uh, after the fact would be um, this antibody test that's being developed. Um, that's not currently ready to be, um, I think, rolled out at a, at a large scale level because we're still studying and learning how accurate these tests are and what the tests mean when someone's positive and when they test negative and how reliable they are. Uh, but these are tests that are coming in the future. Lori asking, how long is a person asymptomatic and can shed the virus? Excellent question. We, we do know that um, the virus can be transmitted when someone is asymptomatic or what we, what some, what we sometimes call pre-symptomatic, meaning in the, in the days before they develop symptoms. Probably the highest risk of someone transmitting the virus in the days before they develop symptoms is in the, you know, one, two, potentially up to three days um, before symptoms develop. But this is part of what we're still learning about this virus and how easily it's transmitted. And Kim asks, is it true that people in China that had recovered are now showing positive again? Can you get COVID-19 more than once? There's um, not evidence that these people um, in other countries that are retesting positive are actually reinfected. And you have to go back to what these tests are. Um, these tests that are being used to diagnose people with infection um, pick up the genetic material of the virus. And we don't know whether that um, virus is live or dead. And so what we've seen is that after someone is infected with COVID-19, people can be positive by these what we call PCR tests, these tests that detect the genetic material of the virus, potentially for, for weeks after they're initially infected. And one of the thoughts is that when people test positive um, and then test negative and then maybe test positive again, it's what we call intermittent shedding of the virus, where maybe the test isn't sensitive enough to pick up um, the virus at all times, but, but it doesn't necessarily mean that these um, individuals are still able to spread live virus. We're still understanding what's going on in, in, in these individuals, and so this is one of the things that's being studied. We have time for one more quick question. Will asks, what temperatures kill the virus? Can it survive extreme heat or cold? Um, great question. I actually don't know exact numbers for um, temperatures that kill um, the virus. Uh, we do know that this virus is spreading, you know, even in colder weather. And we know that um, from other countries that this virus can spread in warmer temperatures as well. So I think part of the question gets to, you know, is this virus going to be around um, over the coming summer months or will the change in temperature, change in humidity um, lead to this virus going away? And, and there's not evidence that that's going to happen. So we expect this virus to be with us for the coming weeks to months. Um, and so we still need to maintain our vigilance and do our best to prevent spread of this virus in our communities. Great information, Dr. Benjamin Chan. Thank you so much for being with us and answering so many of our viewer questions. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you.